Hello, friends, and welcome. I am so excited to see so many of you here today. Oh, my gosh. Um, I just had you write in where you're coming from. Oh, of course, most important thing. Can you hear me first before I go any further? <laughs> leave, me a, leave me a comment in the chat if you can hear me. Yeah. Okay. Whew, thank God. One time started it while this was on mute. Wasn't very good. So <laughs> perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. Well, I'm so excited to see you all here today. Um, we have people coming in from Florida and Florida. Oh my God, can't talk today. New York City, Toronto, my hometown. Hey, Christine. I have a bunch of you on here who I was actually just talking to earlier today. So I'm so happy you all came to join me. Thank you so much. Um, Atlanta, Georgia. Very nice, Louise. Um, hello from LA. Hello, Holly. Thank you. Wonderful. Holly's in England. Hi, Larry. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. Um, so let's see. What do I have to tell you about before we go any further? Um, questions. If you have questions at any point, um, Memphis, St. Louis, beautiful, New Hampshire. Um, if you have questions at any point, instead of leaving them in the chat because it sometimes goes really quick and then I can't see anything in there, um, there is below my face an ask a question um, area. Um, and so I suggest you leave your questions in there and then I'll leave some time at the end to actually go through all of those questions. Um, so yeah, drop them down there for me. Um, I also have a poll going. I wanted to get an idea of how many of you have like already been on Squarespace and Hunt before. So it looks, oh, and it's changing, okay. Um, it looks like more than half are using or have used Squarespace. Um, and then a few of you haven't. So we we have both, that's good. Okay, perfect. Um, and then the other thing which I want to let you know, there's no workbook for this class, like there's nothing that you have to fill out to go along with it, like the past ones, but there is a checklist, which um, I legitimately go through this checklist every single time I launch a new website. Um, so it was previously in blog post form, I wrote it up so you can have it as PDF. So if you click the button below there, you can grab that free checklist as well. Um, and then before you actually go to launch your website to the world, definitely go through um, those steps. There's 10 steps, they're really pretty quick and easy. You can probably accomplish them in like 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's all the like settings that you probably want to have correct on your website before you actually go to launch the thing. So um, let me see. First things first, I'm going to go through a super duper quick PowerPoint, just to give you a little intro. And then we're actually going to get into me sharing my screen and um, showing you the back end of building your own Squarespace site. So I hope you're excited. Um, let me see. I think that's everything I had to tell you. Questions, polls, chat. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay, good. So Let's go through today. We're talking about a Squarespace lesson for beginners. Um, so this is um, aimed mostly at the people who are like just getting started with Squarespace or have like literally never used it and been in the back end of Squarespace before. So that's what I'm aiming this one at. Um, it's not gonna be super advanced things, just like the basic introductory stuff. So that's what we're going through today. Have to get you through the basics before I get you into anything super advanced. Um, so you are in the right place today if um, you are completely new to Squarespace and you would like to see how the platform works in action. You've never actually been in the back of Squarespace. Change that lighting. Um, you're in the right place. If you're looking for a lessons on the basics of building a Squarespace site. Um, and of course, if we've never met before, hello, my name is Paige. Um, I'm a full-time Squarespace website designer. Um, and I tried to think of a fun fact for each lesson. Um, my fun fact is I'm a frequent traveler. I am from Toronto. I'm currently in Germany. Also, um, spend months at a time, different places in the world. My next stop is Southeast Asia. So yeah, that's my fun fact for you today. Um, how I got started was kind of interesting. I'm not your typical IT tech person. My brothers actually studied computer science, but I did not. Um, I got started just because I had a passion for building websites and literally just taught myself how to do it. Um, I really, I got on Squarespace one day and I loved it. I just felt like I could create everything that was in my brain on a page and it was just heaven. Um, so I literally self-taught myself how to do everything that I know now. Um, and I am a full-time designer now. So this was um, an image of one of the first websites that I made um, for a wonderful group of people um, down in Mississippi, actually. Um, they're doing a nonprofit on environmental education. And this was one of the first websites that I built. Um, now I have so glad you were. Oh, okay, good. 
Glad to hear it, Christine. Yep, the replay, um, if you need to leave partway, so don't leave me, but if you need to leave partway, the replay will be available for you too. Um, so now I am a full-time Squarespace website designer and I also run a blog um, which has lots and lots of helpful info on Squarespace. So if you're looking for something to help you out as you're building your website, the blog has tons of resources. Um, I tried to answer all the possible questions I could think of. So there's a lot on there. Definitely go check it out as you're building your website. Um, now I've built over 40 websites on Squarespace now. Um, so I've done it through a pretty specific strategy and I tend to do it the same um, pretty much every time. Um, so I'm basically sharing that strategy with you in these classes. Um, so I'd like to start and go through what we're going to learn in today's class. Um, so first things first, we're gonna do um, a backend tour of Squarespace. I'm gonna go through um, how to see your website as you're building it on desktop, mobile, and tablet. Um, we're also going to go through common blocks, arranging those blocks and making grids um, and layouts on your page. Um, this one is one that I find people who are just getting, like have never built a website before. Um, they're not making as great of use of blocks and grids and layouts as they could be. So that's something I definitely want to teach you. Um, we're also going to get a quick intro to the style editor. That is the magical thing which makes our website fit our brand um, style and look. I'm going to give you a quick guide to blogging. Um, and then um, assuming we have time, I do want to save question, save time for questions at the end. Um, we can also do like an example page build. So um, yeah, and then question and answers at the end. So, oh, and of course, if you haven't already, do download that checklist below. All right, so now I need to change what I'm sharing with you here. So give me one second while I like organize my situation. <laughs> Let me close that one and reshare my screen with you. Da -da -da. Location window. There we are. Do your entire screen, actually. <laughs> You're so welcome, Suzanne. Okay. So you're probably going into, here we are, close this, go over there, perfect. Okay, so I have the chat up, I just, yeah, okay, we're good. <laughs> I have the chat up um, on my iPad, so hopefully I can see all your comments, because right now I'm just looking at my actual, um, Squarespace, the front page of Squarespace. Hopefully you can all see this with me. If you can see it, leave me a comment in the chat so I can make sure that I'm not losing you as I'm doing this. <laughs> Didn't share my screen and you can't actually see it. Um, mm -mm. Can you see my screen all? I just wanna check before I like move any further. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. All right, thank you everyone, perfect. Okay, so. We are now on the Squarespace homepage. So when you go to build your website, uh, the first thing you want to do is go to squarespace.com. And then from here, see if it's the Okay. Perfect. Why am I always on this side, Larry? <laughs> Hilarious. Okay. Um, here we are on squarespace.com. That is the place you want to go to build a Squarespace website. So there's two main buttons, the create a site button and the start a free trial button, and they honestly take you to the exact same place. So it does not matter even one bit which one you click on. Um, and that brings you to the templates page, the page that most people get on, and then they have a complete heart attack because they have no idea what to choose or like how to start or anything. So if you haven't already, there was a class previous to this class, and I went through how to choose your Squarespace template. Um, and that would be massively, massively like, do not build your website until you watch that class, I would say. It's really going to be so helpful to help you pick the right template that's gonna grow with you um, and work for you over time. Um, picking a template is a little bit counterintuitive to how you would think you pick a template. So definitely if you haven't already, um, go watch that past video. If you're on my YouTube, you can, or you can check it out on my YouTube channel or if you're on Crowdcast right now, um, you can also click on my profile, see my past events and then watch that one there as well. So I already know which one I'm gonna use for this example. It is called the Rally Template. It is the template that my website is actually built on. Um, oh, okay, YouTube, yep, there you go, Jody. Okay, um, start with Rally is the first thing I want to do. And then 
Hope it doesn't go too slow. I'm making my computer and internet do a lot of things at once. <laughs> okay, welcome to your new Squarespace site. I'm gonna click start. And then you could select this or you could just skip through it. I'm just gonna skip through it. It's gonna ask you some questions about like what you're building your website for. Um, and then we'll just leave that all like so. And now um, you will have a free trial. I'm a Squarespace Circle member, so my trials are a wee bit longer than yours are. Um, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. Um, but your trial normally will be for 14 days and I, um, they will send you an email after, I think it's still a thing, after 14 days and ask if you wanna extend it by another seven. Um, so you have a couple weeks to actually go in and build the thing before you actually need to tar start paying for Squarespace. Um, so let's give you a little tour around the back of this. So first things first, a lot of people actually don't notice this, um, but up here, if you click on this little down area, we see that we are currently looking at our website on desktop view. We can also switch it to see it on tablet view and then on mobile view. And now seeing your web, mm, when you go to build your website, definitely, definitely build it in desktop view. Um, it would be super tough to try and build it one or the other two. Um, but I absolutely suggest that as you're building, you go and you check what it looks like in the other two views because sometimes things get a little funny. So I'll just give you a quick example. Um, say I have, there's like two blog posts side by side here. It looks super nice. When I click the next button here, um, I sort of have like this awkward blank space happening. And that's because there are um, three posts set up side by side. Now on desktop, it looks really good. On mobile, it looks a little awkward having that blank space there. Um, so when you come on and you view it here, you might realize that instead of putting like three posts, you should put six posts so that there's always, no matter if it's desktop or tablet, like a consistent number um, showing up there. So that's just one quick example of why it is beneficial to view it on tablet. Um, also, mm, how you lay things out. Um, if something is to the left, say you have two blocks side by side, um, the block on the left is going to come first on tablet and the block on the right is gonna come second. So you wanna make sure that say like your title for whatever that section is, is to the left um, if you have two things side by side. I'll show you that again um, as we go through and a little bit of a different example. So that is viewing your website on the regular view and then the tablet and mobile view. Now, um, you'll notice that your website looks pretty much the same as you would see it on the front end back here, except we have a few other options. So say, as I hover my mouse over the page, um, these gray bars st start popping up. Um, and the gray bars um, just give us the editing option. So people on the front end of your website won't see these, but because you're on the back end of your website, you will see these. We also in the back end get, um, these are all the options for um, editing the page, I guess you would say. Um, so yeah, those show up to the left-hand side. And last thing I wanna do, um, sometimes beneficial, we are on desktop view, but I mean, this is a pretty small desktop, but if I open it up over here, that looks a little bit better. Um, so that is also something I would suggest as you're building every once in a while, open it up to see how it looks um, full screen sort of um, without these editing options to the left there. So um, now let's get into pages of your website. So I'm gonna click on the pages tab and then I'm gonna show you the different options of pages that we have. So to add a new page to your website, you click on this plus button right here and it brings up all the types of pages. So we have a regular page page, a product page, cover page, index page, album page, folder page, blog, event, gallery, link page. Um, now, let's see, the most common one that you will use probably 95% of the time is the regular page page. So I'm gonna show you building on a page page in just a moment, but I do wanna explain the other situations that you might use these other types of pages. So. A cover page is for say you want, um, say your website is in two languages and you wanna direct people to like the English and the French version. Um, a cover page is great for that because it just is sort of um, one static page 
um, doesn't really scroll down at all. And it just gives you two options. It's like an image and two buttons for two options for say like French and English, or it's also fabulous if you want to get people to download an opt-in gift, uh, because again, there's like one, one or two options that you put on that page. Um, and so the less opt-in page, the more chances people are going to opt into that thing. Um, so that's the purpose. Or if you just haven't built your website yet, that's also a cover page is beneficial um, to put up while you're actually building the thing. Folder, um, a folder is if you wanna have drop down items in your main navigation. Um, so you would create a folder as like the top bit um, and then you would put pages in to your folder and then those pages would then be the drop down items. So for example, in the rally template demo, um, they have this, you see the icons, they match up to the ones happening over here. Um, so the folder is happening over here and then we can see some regular pages within that folder. And when I hover over exclusives, then the drop down has those two pages within there. So that is how you do a folder um, or drop down menu in your navigation. Then there is the blog page. Um, you will likely just have one blog page on your blog. Um, but then you would have multiple posts and different categories and tags within that blog, but it basically all lives. You will add pretty much one blog page to your website and then do all of your blogging things within that blog. Um, the last thing, which I will mention, now we're not gonna get into it really too much today um, because it's a little bit more advanced, um, but index pages, I want to explain what they are quickly um, in case you're unfamiliar. So an index page is a page page um, is just like content happening on white, like a white space background, um, and then maybe like a banner image above it. Now, if you want your um, website to look a little bit more visually interesting, index pages are great for that. So I'll show you this um, rally template here is an index page. It's a, Think of it kind of like the folder, you add like one index and then pages within it, um, similar to the folder. Um, except the index, the pages within the index all scroll down as one long page, whereas the pages within a folder um, take you to different um, pages. Sorry, I'm saying the word page a zillion times. I hope I'm not confusing you. <laughs> um, so index page, this is the benefit and the purpose of using one. So say we have like white space up here, then we have image with some text on top, then we have some white space, then we have another image with text and buttons on top. And so if we just add a regular page, we're just gonna get this like white space and have the option of one banner image at the top. Now, if we want to sort of break our page up with these little bits of like visual interest of like something in the background every once in a while, that's when you would use an index page. So I just wanna explain what that is um, because some of the templates, um, a lot of them will use index pages for the demo. And so I just wanna sort of explain that so you're not confused when you go into your website um, and you start seeing these indexes and wonder what they are. So, Let's actually get to building on a page. So I'm gonna add a new page to my website. I'm gonna call it the example page. Now, um, I should introduce you to, you have the option to create a blank page or select some of the pre-made layouts. Now I know how to get an index, perfect. Yeah, there you go, Nicole. Um, so these are some of the layout options that they've sort of like pre-designed for you. Now you can absolutely create any of these um, with like yourself, but they're just basically like skipping, adding the blocks and arranging them for you. So that's sort of the purpose of these ones down here. Um, honestly, 100% of the time I use the blank one, though these are good to sort of get you started if you're struggling with like, um, arranging the blocks in the way that you want them to, but I'm also gonna show you something that should help with um, creating layouts on your page. Now, the other thing which I should mention is a lot of people, they will literally go to the demo content of whatever comes in the template, and then they'll just like delete out Squarespace's photo and put it in their own photo and then change the text and put in your text. Um, but in one of the past uh, master classes, someone asked me, how do I make my website look unique? Um, and this is the way that you do it is I would say like just throw out whatever the template example demo content is and just start with your own fresh layout um, because it's kind of hard when you see something to unsee it. Um, so when you start with a blank page, that's really useful. Okay, so, all right. 
Um, this is what happens when you add a new page to your website. You get pretty much blank space with a text block. So um, let's start with um, inserting a new block into your page. So as I hover over the left-hand side, you'll notice that these um, dots with some lines start popping up, and these are called insert points. Um, Squarespace is built on something called blocks, and to put a new block on your page, you use an insert point. So I'm gonna click my insert point, and it shows me all of the block options. Now, there's a whole lot of options in here, so I'm not gonna go through all of them in this with you, otherwise we would be here all day, um, but I'm gonna go through the primary important ones that you need to know about. So, text block, pretty self-explanatory, is for adding text to your website. So, there's actually already one, every page when you start it, starts with a text block. So I'm just gonna use the text block that's already here and show you a little bit how it's done. So, my text for my website goes right here. Now I'm going to copy this, have a bit more text on the page. This is a title and then a bit more text. Lovely. Ta -da. Okay. So I'm just typing in the text block like I would on any like Word doc or pages or anything that you ever use a computer for. Um, and then the options for styling your text a little bit. Um, we're also gonna go into the style editor. I'm gonna show you how that styles your text. Um, but these have the basic, fu basic functions that your like word processor would have. So say if you want to bold some text, you just highlight whatever text it is, and then you click on the B button. If you want to italicize, click on this guy. If you want to link your text, so say I want this to link to um, my Facebook page, then I would click, here, let me go a little slower actually, sorry. This little button here looks like to change all linked up. That is a link option. Um, and now we have multiple options for our links. So we have external files and then content. So external links are links that are going from your website onto a different website or a blog post. That's the primary time that you use this. Now, people sometimes ask like, should I have it open in a new window or should I not? I say, if this is a link going off of your website, select or check this box so that it opens in a new window. If it's a, say you're linking to like a past blog post or something, I wouldn't check the box, otherwise you're annoying people by opening a zillion windows. So um, rule of thumb that I go by is if it's external, click this, open in a new window. If it's a internal link, a link to your own website, then just paste it in right there. Now let's go over to files. Say I want to, oops, go back to that, edit, files. Um, say I want to add an opt-in gift. Say this text here says, download my free opt-in gift. And then you need to somehow add that thing, that opt-in gift to your website. You would click on add a file. On your desktop, you would select whatever that file is, probably a PDF 90% of the time. Um, you can just do it with this image. Um, it will load. And there we are. My link is now linked to this um, picture, or in your case, probably a PDF in the future. Um, and then that will open a new tab so they can download that thing. Um, if you did download the checklist, um, I did the same thing just with a button block. And that's how I did it so that that PDF sort of lived in that button. So the last thing that I need to show you, I'm gonna undo that, delete. Go over to content. And now content, um, is useful for if you're linking to pages within your own website. Um, so um, it won't show you any of the demo pages, so the only pages that exist is this example page in my website right now. Um, so I could link this to that page. So if it's um, a page within your website, then use the content area. Page outside your website, use external. If you want people to download something, then use the file area. Okay, so that is that. The other options that we have is say center aligning or right aligning your text, um, changing it to be a numbered list or a bulleted list, and then we could change it to different headings. So um, I'm gonna click here on normal. I'm gonna change it to say heading one. I feel like that's a little bit too big. Maybe I'll do heading two. No, heading three. So all of my headings, and I'll go over to the style editor to show you how I um, do those. Um, sort of set the style of them. These are the preset styles that come with the template though. So yeah, that is that. Now, next thing I wanna show you is how to add an image block. So I'm going to, again, go over to the left-hand side of my screen, select um, an insert point, select an image off my page. Let's say this is my about page. So I'm gonna 
select a photo of myself. Smiling face. Okay. And now this looks kind of awkward. Like if you went onto a page and my photo took up that much space, it's kind of awkward. Um, so I would. what I want to do is I want to put the photo beside the text. Now you could drag the photo beside the text, but the easier way of doing that or making any sort of layout in your website is to add spacer blocks. Spacer blocks are the magical thing in Squarespace that um, they are the block that I use most of my websites. Um, I think a lot of people don't give them as much credit as they need. They're the unsung heroes of Squarespace. So let me show you about arranging some blocks. So I'm gonna click on my block and then I'm going to drag it around the page. And you notice as I drag it around the page, the gray lines and boxes start moving or appearing. Um, so that gray box or line is telling me if I unclicked, let go of my mouse, um, where that spacer block would drop. Now I want these to be side by side, so I'm gonna drop it right there. And then I'm going to drag my image to the left. I'm gonna go down to my text. I'm gonna drag it to the right and just drop it right underneath that other spacer block. Oh, perfect, it aligns perfectly. Now sometimes this doesn't happen. Sometimes your text, whatever you've written is like this long, which looks kind of awkward. Things look sort of uneven because there's all this empty space happening here. So one way that you can fix that is to put your cursor in between two blocks and drag to the left or right. Now that fits a bit better. Now, one thing that you should know is that with mobile responsive websites, so websites that change depending on the size of screen that you're on, um, exactly how this aligns changes. So say, I'm gonna go save and I'm gonna open this up and then I'm gonna make my page really thin, you notice that the text sort of changes. Um, so we basically can never get it perfect because everyone's screen size is different. Um, so yeah, no perfect solution, but if you get them roughly the same, like the things to the left and right are roughly about the same um, height, that tends to look good. Okay, let me see. Um, I want to add a title to this. So I'm gonna add another insert block. I'm gonna say about, blah, make it heading, center it. And now I have like a bit too much space happening, I think, between the about one and the actual like content. So I'm going to delete out these spacer blocks and then click save. And I think that looks a bit better. So the purpose of using those spacer blocks is because it's easier to drag um, blocks it's easier to create layouts when you set the spacers or say I wanted like a grid of like four um, columns. It's easier to use spacer blocks than it is to drag um, other types of blocks. Um, so that's why I say start with creating a grid of however you want it with your spacer blocks and then drop your content below it. Um, so let me show you a couple other common blocks. Um, button block, this is a super useful one, fabulous for your calls to action. Do action. And then medium, change to a large one, and click apply. I would probably want to link it to somewhere, but yeah. Um, that is a button block. Another thing that tends to be useful, I would put a couple spacers in here. Whenever you sort of go onto like a new section of content, I definitely suggest adding like at least one, if not two spacers in there. Um, and then maybe I want a, let's say I want like um, to show you a lot of my past design work or something. Um, another common type of block is gallery blocks. So an image block is good if you have like literally one, um, one image. If you wanna add a number of images, it would take you a really long time to add them all individually and with image blocks. So gallery blocks basically just like speeds up the process. Um, I would click upload images. I select like these. Oh, here, let me do one, two, three, open. And then as they're loading, I can go over to the design section. And here's where I have more options for how these look. So I can um, change the gallery type from like a grid to a slideshow or a carousel or stacked. Um, I could also, so right now I have three photos um, and it's set to be like four per row. So that looks kind of awkward. I have this empty space there. So I would change to have like three per row and then maybe I want like more padding in between the images. Um, yes, they're pretty white actually, so you can't really see, <laughs> but anyways. Um, or less padding means that they literally go right up against each other. So yeah, that is a gallery block. 
So the next thing that I want to show you, C line, da, 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 yeah, um, video block. Also, I'll just tell you quickly, um, if you go to use the video block, you just upload your video first to either Vimeo or YouTube, and then you literally put in the link, click save, and your video will suddenly appear, which is wonderful. Um, now I'm going to click save here. And I, da, da, da. Perfect. Okay, next thing I want to show you is banners. I have so much to cover, so I'm trying to rush. Okay, banner images. This is how you add a banner image in this specific template. Um, actually, no, this goes for all the templates. Um, setting the height of the banner changes per template, though. So to add a banner to your um, page, you would go to whatever page that you want to put the banner on, and then you would click on settings. Then you would head over from basic over to media, select add an image. Choose an image off your desktop. I'll go with this guy. Um, and then I did not resize that, but I can show you how it would be done. The best thing to do is to resize your images before you actually go to use them on your website. Um, one, because they'll load really slowly like that one. And two, um, because Squarespace will resize the image for the page that the person is on, but just in general, really large image files is like the number one cause of websites going slowly, um, I tend to find. So um, on a Mac, this would be different if you're on a PC, but on a Mac, you would just open that image, click adjust size. Um, rule of thumb is 2000 pixels width is good for a banner image. Um, or if you're, it's like an image of the content on the page, like 1500 or less is good. Um, the main thing that you want to look for is that this here is under 500 kilobytes. Um, that's the suggested size. If you're having issues getting your images down to that size, um, then I would suggest converting them if they're in a PNG to a JPEG. That tends to help things. Um, and then also, um, also, there's something called JPEG Mini, which I use all the time, and I love it. Um, it just helps you get your um, image file sizes a little bit more compressed with still pretty much keeping the quality of your um, photo. So yeah, I'm going to click Save. Oh, there's a lag. OK, thank you, Jennifer. Sorry, I'll go slower. There's not a lag for me. Oh, interesting. No lag here. Oh, OK. Oh, strange. OK. <laughs> all right. Intro. Um, so you can see this banner image looks so wee bit awkward. It's so great, super tiny. Um, OK, perfect. Glad to hear it's all good. OK, so to make this banner image a little bit uh, wider, um, now this is specific to the Brian template family. Different template families will change the height of the banner differently. Some of them are in the style editor. Some of them are like so. So I'll just show you the example on this one here. So click Edit to the intro area. And then add some spacer blocks. Again, your new best friend is a spacer block. Now, some people will add a spacer block and then like drag it out to be however long they want that image to be. But the reason I would caution against this is say you want all of your banners to be a consistent height. It's going to be tough to be like, OK, how far did I drag that exactly? So what I suggest doing is adding a certain number of spacer blocks to every page. So say you want your banner to be like, six spacer blocks in height, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to delete out this text block, which they automatically put there. I'm going to click Save. And ta-da, my banner is taller. Now, um, I would definitely suggest when you're doing this, again, don't like pull the spacer block out, add multiple spacer blocks, and just do the same number of spacer blocks. Set across the board, like the example page has is the same height banner as the fashion, as the home, as the health page. Um, so it just looks a bit cleaner. So yeah. Let me go back down. And I am going to show you real quick how to set your styles for your website. So I am going to, and this is actually what I do, like when I literally, thank you for helping me in the comments, Larry. <laughs> um, this is what I do when I first start a website. The first thing I do before I do anything else is actually set the styles of the website. So I'm gonna call this the mood board page, or maybe like the styles page. And then click start editing. And then what I do, and I have a YouTube video on this as well, of like creating a mood board in Squarespace. Um, so if you want to see this um, a bit more in depth, this specific part, um, that would be a good video to go watch. So heading one, heading two, heading three, body text, 
link text. And then I'm going to add in my buttons. Apply. Oh, so in every Squarespace website, you get three buttons, by the way, a small, medium, large, and you get to set the color and style of the font and everything per um, size of button. And if you're on the brand template, you actually technically get six because you get a button on the regular content of the page. And then you also get a button um, on an overlay. So that's like buttons that are on top of a background image, like a banner image. So now I need to actually set these to be the correct, whatever I called them, body text and link. I need to link this to somewhere. I'm just gonna link it to my example page. Perfect. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because sometimes people go into building their website and then they set their heading one and then they're like, oh, I need a different heading for this area, so I'm gonna set heading two. And then they had setting Set, in, set heading three differently, and things just start kind of looking disjointed and not very coherent. So um, I would say the best way to do it is to set them all at once and then look at them all together and be like, okay, those all look good together. And same thing with like the buttons and everything, um, and then get to actually building the website. So when I'm gonna go back to design to get into my style editor here. Um, takes a minute to load. Now, welcome to the style editor. Um, this is, so blocks create the content of the page and the style editor sets the styles of the website and sometimes adjusts a few layout things. So um, first things first, the quickest way to change a style of something is to hover over whatever that something is and you'll notice a blue um, rectangle appears around it. And there's this giant list of options. So say I'm looking for heading one in here it could take me a while just to look through all these options and find what says heading one. The faster way of doing it is just to click on that set thing. Now, heading one, I'm gonna click over. This is currently, that is just the name of the font. Say I wanna change the font. I just select one of the different fonts in here. Um, I can also, depending on the font, sorry. So weight, some fonts have like multiple different weights. Some just have one weight that's like the um, the weight or the boldness, I guess you could say. Um, you could change italic, not italic, size of the font. Ta -da. Um, how much spacing is between your letters? Uppercase or just regular, title case. Um, and then how much space is between the lines? You always want this set to at least 1.0, otherwise lines start overlapping each other. Um, so yeah. All right, and then color of something. Say you have specific color codes for your brand or you just want um, things to be um, consistent across your website, the best way to do that is with um, color codes. So you can see um, this black color, this is the RGBA color for code for that. The one that I tend to use is the hex code. So let's do like, I'm just typing in something random. At, we'll take that one, sounds good. Now say I want my heading three to be the exact same as my heading one color. I would go in here, copy my color code, click out. You could do this by literally like dragging this around, but then if you try to drag that around, um, it's hard to get all of them to match up. So again, copying your color code, selecting a different item, or maybe say we want, let's do our button to match. Small button, I want this one to be the same color, ta-da. And then button styles that we have, we have an outline, solid and raised. Solid looks like so, and raised is almost the same as solid, just with a little tiny bit of darker color um, towards the bottom of that button. Um, and then same thing, we can change the text that is appearing on our button to all of the bajillion options that are in here. Um, uh, yeah, exact same as the text editor. We can change the color that the text appears on top. White probably actually looks best. You want like contrasting colors for your buttons so that you can actually read them. Um, yeah. So um, I would definitely suggest, as I said, coming in here before you build the actual website, set all of your styles first. Again, if you um, have, want a little bit more in depth on that whole situation, I have a video on that. So definitely check it out on YouTube. I think it's also on my blog as well. Okay. Now I'm going to get 
quickly in the last five minutes I have into the blogging section before I get to your questions. And if you have a question that you've thought of as I'm going through this, um, definitely leave for me in the comments section, please. So to add a blog, I need to select the blog page. New blog sounds good as a name. And now to write a new post, same thing as like adding a new page, you click the plus button <laughs> and my post editor will come up. So this is the title of my post. This is the content of my post. Whoops, forgot to end. There we go. Now, um, in this content area, you literally have all the exact same options and blocks that you have um, on a page. So exact same thing goes for like, um, putting left aligning, creating grids, all those things, it can all be done in the post editor. The post editor is the exact same as the page editor um, for the content of the post. So yeah, is the most amount of headings you can do is three. Yeah, Ooh, okay, if you custom code, you could code in like a four and a five and a six and a, as many as you want. Um, or if you use a template in the Brian family, then your other option is um, any, text that is on top of an image, you also get to th set three styles for those. So you technically edit six then. Um, so yeah. Okay, content of my post would add the actual content of the post in here. And I wanna show you some of the other fabulous features that Squarespace has. So tags, um, using tags. Tags and categories tells um, pretty much Google um, what your blog post is about. So it is beneficial to use them. Um, tags, I would say, Categories, it, how should I start? Tags, you can add, okay, I'll use my example, which I always use. Say you're a food blogger and this blog post is about making tacos. Then your tags would be, um, say like the ingredients of the recipe. So that's quite a number of things. And then categories is a bit, um, you would generally have less categories than you would have tags. So categories would be say that that is, um, tacos is a dinner meal or a lunch meal, to be honest, depending, or if you're on breakfast, but let's just say it's a dinner meal. Um, then you would categorize that as a post that's in dinner, or say you're making a dessert, that would make sense, then you could, people could search like, oh, I need something to make for dessert tonight, I can just look through her whole section, like category of desserts. Um, so that would be super simple. So that is the benefit of using tags and categories. And um, also, if we ever get into an advanced lesson, um, I could show you how you can organize and sort content on all the pages of your website through using tags, categories, and summary blocks. I do also have a video on that though, on my YouTube page if you wanna get into that now. So other things which you should know is if we go over to the options area, the post URL, um, if I just saved this, the post URL, it would automatically become whatever I titled the post, now, titles of posts tend to be, I don't know, a handful of words, maybe like five to 10. But for a post URL, the trend these days is actually shorter and sweeter post URLs. Back in the day, they were like giants. So you can see now it's added in um, what the title of the post is and the date. Now the idea is as short and sweet as possible. So I would just wanna put in like the keywords that relate to this blog post and um, whatever. Um, so, I don't know, uh, taco dinner. There we go, taco, dinner, date night. <laughs> there we go. Um, and then the excerpt area, um, this is like if say you're on your general blog page and it's not the full post, it, then you have like a read more. The excerpt text is whatever comes before that read more. Thumbnail image, again, if you have your like general blog page where it shows all of your posts, that's the image which will show up. Um, so yeah, and then the best part is the scheduling. I didn't know about this for a while and then I learned about it and I was just heaven on earth. So you can schedule your blog post to post in the future and I absolutely suggest you do this. If you wanna blog consistently, which is key to blogging, um, scheduling, like me trying to be up at 6 a.m. hitting publish would giant be a giant pain in the butt. Um, so I just schedule my posts instead so I can sleep while my blog is doing things for me. So um, I schedule my posts to go out at six, Oops, AM, set it like so, click off, click save, and know that you should, like that blog post obviously wasn't finished, but you generally wanna finish your blog post before you schedule it, because it will then publish to be live at whatever time you have set. So this one's going out tomorrow at 6 AM, whether I finish it or not. So 
yeah, just know that. Um, and then if you need to, if you're not quite sure, you could set it back to draft mode and then click save. Okay, perfect. And thank you all for dropping super helpful links in the chat. I much appreciate it. Um, okay. I think that is all the time that I have for showing you around the back end, but I would love to take your questions. So let me go back to my Crowdcast. Stop sharing that. Oh, 10 questions. Oh, boy. Okay. Close this. My computer is going slow because I'm telling it to do so much right now. <laughs> da, I hope that was helpful for y'all. There we go. Okay, it's closed. Perfect. Let's get to these questions. Did you give me easy ones? <laughs> okay. Um, Patricia. Trisha says, hi Paige, thanks so much for the webinars. You are super welcome, I love all of them. Um, my question is, I am waiting for my logo and house style designer to have some time for me mid-December. What would you recommend? Start my building my website immediately and I will be able to easily insert the designy bits later or wait until the designy bits are ready and then start building my website. Thanks Patricia, I love that you said designy bits. I should start saying that now, that's hilarious. Um, so. I saw you put this in earlier, so I already thought of an answer for you. Um, if the designy bits, so say he's designing like a mood board and color palette and setting like the styles of the fonts and the colors um, and creating lots and lots of things for your website, I say wait until those are all polished off because you do want your website to be consistent with your brand. If he's like just doing a logo for you, um, then I would say that that's something easy, which you can just build a website and then pop that in at the end and it doesn't really make a difference to like the overall like style of things um oh yeah flat icon great that's what i use nicole um so yeah if he's setting the whole like style of everything in your brand i'd say hold off if it's just like one or like just like a logo then i would say go for it and then just pop it in once you're done so i hope that helped um Patricia said, it's me again, sorry, no problem. <laughs> I've read good things about Yoast for WordPress. Does Squarespace have something similar? This is a fabulous question. Yep, okay, good, Patricia. Um, Yoast for WordPress, I have so many things to say about this. Okay, Yoast for WordPress does not actually, like the, the plugin itself does not actually improve your um, search engine ranking. Um, Yoast for WordPress is basically like a digital checklist showing you like, yes, you got, um, you put your keywords in the title. Yes, you put them in this heading and in your image and all these things. And it's literally just a digital checklist, but the actual um, plugin itself doesn't actually boost any SEO value just by itself. Um, so no, there is not. But if you just make a checklist of like, put keywords in heading, put them in title, put them in image, all those things, um, then it's literally the exact same thing. And then anytime you go to publish a new page or a new post or something, you're just basically going through that checklist. Um, so no, it does not have something similar, but don't stress too much because that doesn't actually really affect um, how good the SEO on your website is gonna be, assuming that you can just like remind yourself of those things of having your keywords in these certain places that matter. Um, Sue, how would I add a list sign up op opt-in box above the fold on all of my pages? Use that intro area where I was showing um, the adding the spacer blocks to make your banner a certain height. Um, now know that Brian or a template within the Brian family would be the only um, template that you would be able to put any block on a banner at the top of the page. So that would definitely be the template you wanna go for if you want to put um, an opt-in area on the top of every one of your pages. So use that intro area, the banner area, and then just add either your code block if you're using something other than MailChimp or add in the newsletter block if you are using MailChimp. Um, and that's how you would get it on there. Mm -mm -mm. Ah. Oh, okay, Tara, good one. 
Um, Brian Tablet, yeah, good, great. Um, sorry, Tara said, where do you organize or house reviews if the goal is to get them to scroll eventually? Great question. Um, so you will see this, I think, on my home page. Um, I have, okay, so this is a bit more of like an advanced hack. I, I have a blog post on this and 95% positive. Um, you use a new blog page. You call that blog page like reviews. And then you, in the excerpt area of the blog post, that's where you add the actual like testimonial or review. Um, and then you add a summary block pulling from that reviews blog page and then set it, the summary block to be a carousel. And that's how you get it to do the scrolly thing. So yeah. Um, 95% sure there's a blog post on that. So definitely go look there for the actual like step by step if you want to like look at that again or watch this replay. That's the other option too, I guess. Um, uh, oh, okay. Katrina, I think someone got your credit. Katrine. Katrin. Sorry, I'm saying your name, but it too. Sorry. Um, what's the site to resize a JPEG called? Um, it is jpegmini.com. Robin, I like the layout of Rally, but does this template allow e-commerce? Can I insert e-commerce into any template? Heck yes, you can. Um, yes, you can in do e-commerce with any template. Some of them are more suggested for e-commerce than others. Um, the primary reason would be they're just more flexible templates, which gives you more flexible layout options of all your products. Um, and then also some of them give you the option of having the like cart icon in your top navigation, which is generally pretty normal for a e-commerce website. Um, so that would be, yeah, um, you can do e-commerce on any website. If you want that little icon in the top right, um, Google Squarespace e-commerce templates. I'm pretty sure Squarespace has a list of the best ones for e-commerce, or you could also go on my template comparison chart um, and it has like flexibility for e-commerce. Choose one that has like large or extra large flexibility for e-commerce. Um, so yeah, but Rally is a great option. Okay, Robin asked, um, I like your platform for this web webinar. Are you using Teachable? Also, I find that the chat feature very distracting. Can this be disabled? <laughs> um, chat cannot be disabled, but you could pull your browser to the side so you don't see it. Um, and then is this Teachable? This is actually something called Crowdcast. Um, Teachable, I think, is for like hosting courses, and Crowdcast is specific to hosting webinars. So um, I recently started using Crowdcast. I'm a big fan. Um, it's definitely the best one that I found. Um, it's super reliable, and that's the most important thing, I think, with a webinar. I tried some other ones, and they were kind of finicky and didn't work so well. So this is my choice is Crowdcast. Uh, Lisa asked, um, can the font size be changed on a page or only in the style editor? Um, only in the style editor. Once you set that heading or body text to be a certain size, then that's gonna be consistent across your whole website. Um, so yeah, you would change the sizes in your style editor. And then on the actual page, what you do is you select like, do I want heading one, two, three, or body text? And so that would then, assuming you've set those different headings to be different sizes, then that would change it on your um, page, the size. So yeah, um, but generally, yeah, you set everything in the style editor. Once you, in the beginning of building your website, you'll spend a lot of time in the style editor. And then once you've set things, you'll basically just leave that alone. So yeah, set everything, sizes and text and everything in your style editor, and then just pretty much leave it after that, actually. Um, Jennifer said, I am a photographer, I shoot teens, women, and professional portraits. What would you suggest to separate the content as far as design? I want the moms of my teens to see my women portraits too, so I don't want all separate, struggling with this. Okay, fabulous question. Was talking to someone earlier about this, so I'm gonna give you the same suggestion. So um, with any website where you have like different audiences coming to your website, you want to separate them out to their like section or page of the website pretty quick. So the way that you do that is say on your homepage, you would have um, teen photography, women photography, and professional portraits. Um, images of all three, and then buttons. 
And think of it like doorways, like you're leading each person down the door that makes the most sense for them. So you would have those three, say like images and then buttons telling them like, this is this direction. If you are a teen, you go this way. If you are a mom, you go this way. Um, if you're a professional, go that way. Um, so yeah, it's doing something, it's called the doorway method. Um, on your homepage, which then immediately points those people to the page, which is specific to them. And that's a fabulous idea that you do that because then you could make the copy, uh, the text on your page really speak to that specific person instead of trying to make all the copy on your website sort of um, general to those three groups of people. You can have them on specific pages where you talk just to those people and that's gonna make your sales a lot more effective. Uh. Okay, Kelly, does the post URL affect SERP ranking? Um, will shortening the URL hurt the SERP ranking? Um, so back in the day, the sh thing you used to do was do dates in the blog post URL and then like just the whole name of the blog post, um, but they're going now for shorter ones. So I would say it's not a massive impact, um, but it is ever so helpful. And instead of telling Google like, this is my blog post title, um, you're using a bunch of words which aren't really that beneficial, like this is my, um, is not very helpful for what people are going to be searching you by. So just use in the blog post, or sorry, URL, and therefore title. No, URL, in your title, use the longer full title. And um, the URL, use just like those keywords. Um, again, not going to make a massive difference, like having links back to your website and your website loading quickly is going to help way more than just like the URL. Um, but it's definitely not going to hurt. So yeah, shorter is better these days. Hope that helped, Kelly. Uh, I got four more minutes and three more questions. Can I do it? <laughs> uh, Suzanne said, I wanted to use Brian, but then I bought a template design kit from Station 7, and it's only compatible with Charlotte. Will that be a good one? Can't remember off the top of my head. I would say um, check the Squarespace template comparison chart and go through and look at, I mentioned like overall flexibility of the template um, and assuming Charlotte has scored like large or extra large, I would say that's a good template to go with. I can't remember off the top of my head what exact ranking I, I gave it. Um, but check that if it gets like larger, extra large and flexibility, then go with it for sure. Um, and yeah, Station 7 is great. Their designs are super cute, so good choice. Larry, uh, could you mention that trials are for three weeks for each template you open? So one, extend the learning time by starting a new template, then first, second, third, et cetera, trial ends. I took the creative destruction route with Squarespace to learn how to use the platform. So we built 10 trial websites before starting playing, before, uh, before starting paying at about six weeks. Perfect, thank you for the public service announcement, Larry. <laughs> Uh, ah, Nicole, <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, I searched your website and didn't see a blog post on complimentary font examples. Is that something you might do in the future? I actually went to go write that post and then was not loving the post and then just stopped writing it. Um, so it's definitely something I've thought of. It's not a post which currently exists. Um, I think maybe Go Live HQ might have a post like that. I'm pretty sure. Check. I think it's like golivehq.co or just Google Go Live HQ. I'm pretty sure they have a blog post on complimentary fonts and that was specific to Squarespace. Um, so while I don't have one, I'm pretty sure they do. So that should help you. So yeah. All right. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Yep, you got it. Perfect. I think they might even have two on that actually. So check back as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, this was Google. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Paige. You're super welcome, Larry. Um, that brings us to the end. I finished just on time. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Um, I would love for you to come hang out with me in the future. Um, I have recently been talking to some subscribers, literally got on the phone with them uh, the past couple of days, and it was so nice. You're welcome, Laura. Um, and they mentioned that they love things in video format. So I'm definitely gonna be working, um, producing a lot of video content for you come next year. You're welcome, Erica. 
Um, so if you haven't already, do come check out my YouTube channel. If you head to my blog, you can click on the little YouTube icon down in the footer there. Um, I'd love for you to come subscribe and hang out with me there because that's feel like I'm gonna push for being active on YouTube next year. So yeah, um, thank you so much for coming and I hope you have a re wonderful rest of your day. You're very welcome, Michael. Bye. <laughs> You're welcome, Nicole.